who will teach him this deen? There's nobody better to teach him the deen than the father. If they see you making wudu, that's more than all the books in the world. If they see you making ruku, this is more than all the videotapes about how to do salah. If they're with you, fasting and praying, going to Mecca, doing Umrah, doing, you know, the things that Muslims are supposed to do, that's the best thing you can pass on to your child. Look at the advice that Allah is talking about in the Quran in chapter 31, Surah to Luqman. Luqman is talking to his son. And what is he telling his son? He's telling him the importance of obeying your parents. Now we're talking about the children. Obey your parents in anything and everything unless they want you to worship other than Allah. Because worshiping other than Allah, shirk, is the one thing Allah does not forgive. How important is it for us to give respect to our parents? Now, every one of us here, I think, would like to have good children. You're an adult and you have children, you want your children to be good, yes? But the children, you, youngsters, you guys listening to me right now, wouldn't you like to have good children when you grow up? Nice children. They'll take care of you. You get old. They're, they're waiting on you, taking care of you, bringing you things. You know, Islam tells you how to begin to have good children before you get married. Huh? Islam teaches you how to have good children even when you're a child. In fact, that's when it begins. If you want good children to treat you good, to be good, then you have to be good to your parents. Because how you treat your parents, Allah will give you children like that. If the treatment of your parents is good, Allah will make it so your children treat you good. But if you disrespect them, if you don't take care of them, if you don't give them their rights, even if they're not Muslim, if you don't give them their rights, then your children are going to give you your rights. It's just that easy. Are you familiar with the story about the one who became fed up with his father? His father was old. His father was, you know, didn't have any mind anymore. And he's tired of taking care of him. He's a very old man. And it's, you know, so he took him to the desert. And he wants to dig a hole. And he's going to kill his father and throw him in the hole. But his father said, over there, over there. Over there. He said, what is he talking about? Over there. It's funny. He said, what are, you, what are you saying, old man? He said, over there, over there. Over there what? Over there. Take me over there. Why? He said, that is where I buried your grandfather. Uh, think about it. It's just a story, but it's a scary one. Because how you treat your parents is how your children will treat you. There are a number, uh, there are a number of considerations in helping our youth today. But one of the most important ones of all is our time, to spend our time with them, to help them to understand the deen of Islam. And then show them by example, by taking care of your parents, so they can see how to take care of you. It's not that complicated, is it? They'll ask you many questions. After the program is over and they start QA, one of the key things they'll say, well, what do we do about dating? About boyfriend, girlfriend? Why did the children feel like they have to have a boyfriend or girlfriend anyway? Where did that come from? Again, it goes back to looking for that peace inside. I think if I have this girlfriend, I'm going to feel good inside. But actually, you're not. You're going to feel upset all the time. You're going to be wearing, where is she, what's she doing, like, oh, la, la. and maybe somebody else is talking to her. Uh, uh, is, uh. And, you know, this is not going to be peace. Uh, even if you get married, it doesn't solve everything. It doesn't. The real inner peace, the solution to the whole thing, only comes from one place. And I'm going to end by telling you this. 
When I got to Islam, I found the answer to the problem that my friend asked me many years before. I also found the solution to the story I read in the book. It all came together with one word in the Arabic language. The word is Islam. The word is Islam. And if you said, what? How does that work? It's a religion. No, it's not. It's much more. Islam is the noun, the name, but it comes from the verb aslama. And aslama comes from silm or simlam mim. The very root. This is the etymology of the word. Because if you understand aslama, it has five important ingredients. Otherwise, it's not aslama. It has to have all five. Surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace. And all of them are in there. All of those words are in there in the Arabic language. The first one is surrender. To give up to Allah. Give everything to Allah. No matter what it is, I give it up. Whatever you want for you, you give it up. I don't care what it is anymore. Up to Allah. Second is to submit to what Allah wants. Allah wants you to eat this or don't eat this. Drink this or don't drink this. Pray like this. Don't do like this. Worship Allah this way, but not that way. All of these things, you submit to it. And then you obey the commandments of Allah. You obey to the best of your ability. And then this one. You have sincerity. This is the one that means that I will do this, all these three here, even if nobody's watching. I'm not doing it because people are watching me. I'm doing it for Allah from, from my heart. I want to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, La ikraha fiddin. He doesn't force you to do it, but if you do it, you do it 100%, not 99%. And then finally, the salam, the peace. But the peace will not come until you have the other four. Because this peace right here is not just like salam alaikum. No. It's not just that kind of salam. This kind of peace is the, also the sakina, the inner peace that comes because it's not about getting a new house. It's meaning that you will be at peace even if the house burns down. It's not about a new car because you will be at peace even if you lose the new car. If somebody steals it, you'll still be at peace. And it's not about getting a, a, a husband or wife because you will still have this peace if they run off and leave you. Because what kind of peace is this? This is the peace that Prophet ﷺ told us about. This is the, this is the condition Rasul ﷺ told us about. He said, Ajib, amazing is the condition of the believer. The mu'min. Because only good happens to him. When the good things comes his way, he makes shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you, Allah. Thank you. And when difficulty comes his way, he makes sabr. He's patient. And it's all good for him. But it's only going to be in the case of who? The believer. Do you understand that? We have another program that we always uh, associate with the program I'm telling you about right now. This is for youth. There's another program called why do bad things happen to good people or the beauty of Islam? You get a chance to watch this program on our internet websites. Be sure and check it out. It's a very important program. It's only Allah that guides. That's how I started out our program. That's how I wind it up. Whoever he guides to the straight path, nobody will misguide them. You want your children guided, you don't guide them. It's Allah that does it. But you set the example. It's only Allah who controls what happens. You want something, ask Allah. And He, and only He, is the one who can make it happen for you. Make sense? Check out our internet websites for more about this. Visit our new website at youtubeislam.com where you can upload your own videos and watch them. If your children have done some amazing thing that, wow, I want to show the world, fine, we have a, they're uploading now showing children reciting Quran, nasheeds, things like this, you can do that. 
but you'll be happy to know that we also approve each one individually. So it takes time for you to see it, but it also means your children are not going to see any garbage. Nothing on this website, inshallah, other than just mainstream Islam, YouTube Islam. Another website that we have is, you might like to go through and just watch the videos like we're making now. This is called Watch Islam. WatchIslam.com. You can also get Peace TV there free. You don't have to go through the satellite. And you can get Huda TV and Islam Channel and Share Islam TV. And our newest one called Bridge to Faith. The Bridge to Faith is for all faiths to come and learn why it's important to have faith, how to get it, and how to keep it. This is uh, a new program that we're doing for the interfaith thing. People always talk about working with other faith groups. Well, we do it in Washington, D.C. Then we also have shareislam.com, so you can share Islam with other people. We also have some to help the Christians to better understand what we believe about their book. It's called 911 Bible. It's a very nice website. We have so many websites, if I begin to tell you I need more time for the website story than I do for the program. So I'll just give you the master list. And you can go and index from there and find our newsroom, chat room, the audios, the videos, and places where you can give us the feedback. And it's all on one big site called Links to Islam. Links to Islam.com. Okay, that's all the commercials out of the way now. And I'll wrap it up by telling you that it was a great chance to be with all of you. And as I begin, I end the same way. In Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Hu Aladi Jalna Muslimin. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.